Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to create the rig controllers from scratch for this character here. This model was provided by one of the members of our Discord community. I believe it's called Malacris by Synthetitar. 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 Okay, I just should have asked. That's not the way to treat the community members, is it? But anyways, first I go to File, Import FBX Model. Then I have to go to the rigging mode to create the controllers. But first, can I actually use a quick rigging tool here? This character is not fully a humanoid. However, it does have quite a few features that are similar to a humanoid character. It has hips, two arms. By the way, the arms are very much human, except for the claws really. It has a neck and a head, and only legs appear to be quite different. Although, as different as they may seem, they do consist of the very same components and only the proportions are different. For example, this here is a knee and that is a heel. The foot here appears to be much longer and the character sort of tiptoes. Overall, yes, I can use the quick rigging tool here. So let's start with assigning the pelvis. These bones are related to the tail, so we will deal with them later. For now, we can work with the spine. So as you can see, there's quite a few points that the character spine consists of. We can rotate them in the viewport to see which ones would work best. I think this one would definitely do for the stomach. After rotating the joints, make sure you undo all the changes so the pose would remain the same. As for the chest, we shall pick the joint a bit higher up, like this one, or maybe even this. The neck and the head are quite straightforward, really. Now down to the arms. So there's plenty of joints in the arms as well, so you've got to be careful. This is the joint the arm bends around, so we shall assign this one. And finally, we assign the claw to the hand. And same goes for the legs. We assign the hips, uh, figure out which joint the knee bends around. And all the rest here is the foot and the toes. Nice. So now we have to mirror the controllers for the other side. Now we've just assigned the right side of the character. So in the original we shall type in the prefix that is used to define the right side. In our case the right side is defined as underscore R and the left one as underscore L. Now click create mirror object and if done right you shall now have all the controllers assigned. And now we can add rig elements. And here they are. At the first look it seems alright. The only thing I would have changed is the position of the toes. The best way to do that would be to shift select both points and then drag them along one axis. Just to make sure that everything remains symmetrical. Now we can exit the rigging mode and check if the controllers work properly. Well, auto-posing obviously does not work smoothly. We can clearly see there's definitely an issue with the legs. Well, that's expected since auto-posing was initially created to work with humanoid characters. But it still works in some way. But for some points, you would definitely have to come up with some sort of solution. Maybe lock the points or use the point controller mode instead. But check this out, the point of the heel is actually placed on the ground level, which allows autoposing to give more stable results. But now that we see that the rig actually works, we can focus on the details. Let's add the tail, shall we? To do that, you have to create the controllers manually. Let me show you on this simple example how the process of creating controllers actually works. Each rig element consists of three points, a box controller and a rigid body. The rigid body is required for the physics tools to work. And the position of this whole element is actually determined by those three points. The main point determines the position and the two other, the rotation. The directional point rotates around the main point and the additional point around the main axis. 
To create such an element, you have to select the joint and simply press Add Rig Element. And you can delete one by pressing this button here. You can also set the axis for the additional point to rotate around. This is there for the convenience purposes really. The general workflow remains the same. With people, for example, those points usually face forward and they act as direction controllers, like these ones here. But with animals, for instance, it could be much more convenient for those points to face upwards. You can also choose between global and local spacing for the axis. In the global space, the y-axis goes vertically. But because certain parts of the character might be placed at an angle, it would make more sense to use local space for them. And finally, the offset value sets the distance from the additional point to the main one. You can set any distance really, depending on what would be more convenient to work with. Well, if this point is too far away, it may create some mess in the viewport. But if it's too close, it may become really difficult to use it. If your model has a lot of joints, but you want to create less controllers for them, you can create rig elements for the groups of joints. To do that, you have to select the first and the last joints of this group and press Add Rig Elements. When you have multiple elements, they form a chain in such way that the direction point is connected to the main point of the next element. Feel free to move the direction points at the end of the chains, as well as those additional points. However, if you break the connection in the middle of the chain, or move the whole element away from the joints, it may cause the rig to not work properly and the joints to get deformed. And this is all we have to know for now to create the rig elements for the tail. If you want to learn more about rigging, you can find more tutorials on our website as well as in the Cascadeur documentation. Now, select the joint, switch to local mode. For this one, I believe the Y axis should do the job. So I set it to Y, local, and shift select the end joint to create the rig element between them and repeat the same for the rest of the tail. Now that we have the rig elements created, we can adjust the parameters for those rigid bodies. For example, we can change their mass. The weight of the rigid bodies influences the position of the character's center of mass. The heavier the tail will be, the closer the center of mass will shift towards it. It will also influence the character's physics behavior and its balance. You can also use the mouse wheel to adjust the size of those rigid bodies. It is best to keep it within the boundaries of the character's mesh. So what else can we do to improve it? We can move the additional points to make them easier to work with. Also, let's check the claws here. The controllers are clearly misaligned. Besides, the claws are way bigger. It would be much more convenient if the direction points would roughly match the size of the claw. I will manually correct them in one of the claws. And then I can instantly check if these settings work all right in the animation mode. That looks fine. Also, better placement of the points will make it easier to work with the trajectories. Now to make the other claw match perfectly, it would be best to mirror the controllers. Let's first delete the old ones for the entire arm. And then in the mirror group tab, we type in the name. In the original, we type in the prefix of the joins we've just made the controllers for. This would be underscore R and underscore L for the mirrored. Set the mirror plane, select the objects that we want to copy and click create mirror object. Another thing we can fix is the head controllers. It is usually best if the head direction controller matches the direction in which the character looks. However, 
it might as well be reasonable to align it with the tusks. Again, that's solely a preference. Whatever makes it convenient for you to work with, really. For example, if the character is going to use these tasks to attack, it would be very convenient to have a controller there. And that is all we had to do in the rigging mode. But here's a couple of things. In the auto-posing mode, moving the character will also influence the tail. To avoid such behaviour, it is possible to set the tail to behave as an FK. First, let's get the character back into T-Pose. To do so, select all the box controllers, go to Commands, T-Pose. Double click to select all the points of the tail, go to the tab Point IK FK settings and switch to FK. And now it will follow the body. This way, you can set all the poses that you need first and then when it's time to animate the tail, you can switch it back to IK. Because in most cases, it's much more convenient to work in the IK mode. Check the way the tail behaves in different modes. It might also be handy to have your tail as a separate track on the timeline. And there you go, this rig is done. If you have any questions, make sure to check our Discord server and stay tuned for the updates. Thank you for watching and see you next time.